1984, that year, Ronald Reagan was president, gas was $1.16 a gallon, and a stamp cost just 20 cents. A lot has changed in the last 29 years, but not for the family of a Sullivan County man. Someone murdered Floyd Otis Turner July 10th of that year. To this day, investigators still have not solved the crime. The motive? Possibly a business deal gone bad, a terrible end to an affair or relationship or something else entirely. And it hasn't helped over the last three decades that there have been plenty of dead ends. Early on, a fisherman found the murder weapon in a lake but not knowing it was linked to a crime, cleaned the person cleaned the gun first, leaving no forensic evidence behind. The state of Tennessee continues to offer a $5,000 reward in the case. Still no luck. Most recently, investigators resubmitted evidence, hoping to find some new DNA. Still no break. This investigation has spanned three Sullivan County sheriffs. Perhaps the most puzzling dead end occurred internally. Tonight, we're learning under the watch of one of those sheriffs someone dropped the ball. Community watchdog Nate Morabito found out the current administration has spent the last several years trying to fix that mistake and solve the murder. For Don Turner, it's a lonely walk to his older brother's grave. Every time he returns to Otis's final resting place, oh. He comes empty-handed. Despite his best efforts, Don still doesn't have the answers he needs. I just want to know that I'm still looking, you know, uh, not giving up. In fact, three decades later, long time, isn't it? He has more questions than ever. 29 years. <laughs> All those years ago, my cousin had called and told me that I was in the accident meeting at the hospital. It took just a few hours for Turner to learn the news. I hit, fell right to me. If anything, time has only made that feeling of loss even more painful. It's rough. I told myself I ain't gonna break down, so I'm not. <laughs> oh, I hope, uh, but it, it's rough. And now he's dealing with another disturbing development. I'm highly ticked off. Recently, Turner learned the file of his brother's murder at the sheriff's office for years was smaller than the one at his house. It blows my mind that uh, they'd lose the file. Not only is your brother killed, the sheriff's department then loses the case file. Yes, sir. How does that make you feel? I just can't understand it. It's just uh, mind-boggling for anybody to be that incompetent. The case file started just off Interstate 81 near Bluntville, under this bridge. I come across that bridge at night, 12 o'clock. Just an hour and a half later... It was kind of a curiosity thing. Major Keith Elton, then 32, was driving by when something caught his attention. Uh, the car was sitting just by where we're standing here. Tires uh, could have been on the grass. Not only was there a car on the side of the road, it looked like the window was rolled down and it was raining. Why did anybody at that time of the morning is sitting there when it's starting to rain with the window down? It turns out a bullet had shattered the window. I came around uh, and that's when I found the, uh, the body in the car. Killing the 40-year-old inside. I saw a male slumped over toward the passenger side. After Elton filled out this police report, the case left his hands. It was something that I continued to think about. From there, as time passed, so did the case file, in and out of the hands of who knows how many different investigators, under the leadership of three sheriffs. The time passage has been just so detrimental to this case. Then, in 2009, Joey Strickler took over the case. The evidence was all still there, but the case file... It was um, probably the, the size just of a uh, regular folder. ...was practically non-existent. For a homicide investigation, uh, it was ridiculous. Um, because most uh, case files are, in homicide cases, end up being boxes. The sheriff's office suspects a previous administration either failed to document developments in the case or misplaced the files altogether. So That's someone messed up. Possibly. It was hard putting the case back together. Um, there was a lot of things that um, could not be located. Some of that information died when those involved passed away. Strickler had no choice but to start from scratch. 
He interviewed witnesses all over again and reconstructed the case. We started basically reinventing the wheel. In the time since, he says the current administration has kept this case a priority. To the sheriff's office's credit, in recent years, investigators have featured this cold case on our Monday's Most Wanted segment, once in 2009 and again in 2011. Today, he says the department has two or three people of interest. I believe someone could, if they would, come forward and talk to us. And it would be the glue that would put it all together. And I think you know who that person is. I have a... I have a, a, a strong belief. For this investigator, the case is personal. I wish that I could get the guy. Mostly because he knows how much pain Turner's brother is going through. I've seen his heart and his love for his family. And that drives you even more to get some closure for him. Missed his grandkids. Uh, you know, for, I got four beautiful ones and I'm enjoying it. And, he didn't get the chance. That brother is more heartbroken today than ever. I can understand a case going to where you can't find anything, but for lose all the information, that's, that's uncalled for. Turner doesn't know who's to blame. Somebody ought to be held accountable. But he knows the mistake couldn't have helped his brother's case. Somebody knows, and uh, it, it'll come out sometime, I believe. All he can do now is keep the faith, a faith shaken by law enforcement, but one that can be restored by investigators, too. As long as there's a breath in me, uh, there's hope. Nate Morabito, News Channel 11, in your corner. Well, Sheriff Wayne Anderson's officers say this mistake wasn't his administration's fault. Before him, Sheriff Keith Carr was at the helm. Now, Carr, who retired away from the area, tells us the file did not disappear under his watch, saying, and I quote, when we took over in 1989, there were files that had disappeared on several cases. I don't think anyone can attest to what happened to the records prior to 1989. Records kind of walked during that time. We took pride in maintaining records once we took over, end quote. Well, before Carr, Mike Gardner was sheriff. He was convicted of crimes while in office. We tried tracking down Gardner, but we were unsuccessful.